Here they are as I get closer. Standing at the gate. Back this thing up. There's Chief. Hey, buddy. There's Joy. Look, like, here she comes. Hey, baby. How you doing? Hey, guys, I want to talk to you mules today. There's a lot of reasons why I have mules and not horses. A mule is a, is a half horse and half donkey. Is Dad's a donkey and his mama's a mule. And the bone structure of the donkeys is a lot different than the bone structure of a horse. This is Chief right here in the foreground. He's my bay. He's about 12 years old. And then that's Joy in the background, my sorrel. And she's turned seven. Now, if you look at her back when Chief moves his head, you'll see how flat her back is. On a horse, there'll be a swell on the back where the withers come down. The withers, the withers is the top of the shoulder. And if you look on a horse, you'll see they're real swayed back compared to a mule. Well, they get that from their donkey daddy. And their shoulders... On a horse, they move forwards and backwards like a, like a locomotive. On a donkey and on the mule, the shoulders move up and down like a piston in a car. And so the saddles have to be a little bit different. A, a uh, horse saddle won't fit on a mule, just cause the mule a lot of pain and a lot of hurt. But a, a mule, gets all of his attributes from his daddy <clears throat> and what I mean by that is is a donkey has a, a fight reflex where a horse has a flight reflex so the the horse spooks a lot easier and scares a lot easier than than a mule because he gets it from his donkey daddy that's why you see donkeys in with sheep or goats or whatever they're the guardians and they'll they'll chase a coyote down and kick a coyote to death they're not afraid of it where a horse will run through it they'll run through a fence i mean um you know they'll get hung up in barbed wire and keep kicking and keep thrashing and you know a, a mule he'll if he if something were to spook him and he were to get hung up, he's not going to sit there and keep thrashing. He's going to stop and wait for somebody to come get him. A mule will have three feet on the ground at all times, where a horse will have two feet on the ground when they're walking. So that enables them to be more sure-footed on the trail. They can also see all four of their feet at the same time, where a horse can only see his front two feet. So if you've got a horse's head tied up and you're feeding them, and you get behind him and he gets scared, he'll kick out in fear. And if you're back there, then you're gonna be the recipient of it. <clears throat> Many people have died by getting kicked by a horse that was scared because he couldn't see behind him. A mule, he can see that you're back there. Now, as a guideline, you always want to keep your hand on the animal so that the animal knows where you are when you're walking around him. You just want to keep a light touch on him. You're walking around his hindquarters, so just so he knows that you're back there, and you want to talk to him as well. But when you're on the trail, if they see an animal or a, you know, any, anything, they'll stop, they'll train their ears on it, and they'll assess the situation and they'll determine is it a threat do i need to stand and fight or do i need to run in flight most of the time they'll just stand there and assess the situation a lot of times when people see these guys they say well they're a lot small smaller than i thought they were going to be well these mules are saddle mules 
they're 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 bred for riding. In yesteryear, when our when our forefathers farmed the land, they used draft horses to make their mules. They used Percerons and Clydesdales and Belgians, and so they had really 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 big draft mules. Well, now you can breed any type of mule you want. If you want to, if you want to do dressage or hunter jumper or whatever, they've got mules for that. If you want to do trail riding, if you want an Appaloosa mule, if you want a Palomino mule, if you want a quarter horse mule, I mean, you can breed a donkey with whatever horse you want, <clears throat> and you can get whatever. So Joy over here, she's fifteen one. Weighs about 975 pounds. And Chief here is about 12 years old. And weighs about 875 pounds. And again, he's a bay. And you can see he's got some red on his chest and on his upper legs and stuff. But they've already shed out their winter coats. And then Joy is, is what's called a red sorrel. And if you notice their manes, they just stick up. It's like a mohawk. They're not like a, a horse where they get real long and they lay over. They get that from their donkey again, their donkey daddy. And so what happens is they're real thin and they grow straight up. You can see Chiefs has been cut recently in the last month or so but you can see the line where it was cut and how much has grown out since it was cut. And Joy, she hadn't been cut this year. So you typically keep their manes cut real short just because they grow straight up. Some people leave them long, but most people will cut them. See how long her ears are? And they're just really calm. They just don't, they don't really get too excited about anything. Now the mule is a trust animal. When I first got these mules, I couldn't do anything with them. Chief walked away from me for probably the first four months I had him. Anytime he saw me coming, he just start walking the other way. Joy, she would do the same thing. She would walk up to you. She would get about 10 feet away from you. And then she would stop. She would look at you. And then she would walk off. So you have to earn their trust. And so you can catch them real easy with a bucket full of grain. They'll come up and eat from you. And then you can... You can catch them, but once you earn their trust, they're your buddies and they're they're in your back pocket. Now, Joy, she came from a guy in Iowa. He bred her. And he he raised her since day one. So I knew everything about her. Knew her birthday and everything. Chief, he came from some mule trader up in Kentucky. I'm not going to tell you the guy's name, but if you're interested in buying a mule from anybody in Kentucky, a guy in particular, just Google his name, and I've written a review of how bad my experience was with this guy, and I may have just had a bad experience. It could have been my inexperience, but he was just a lying cheat. I'm just going to tell you that. Again, he may have a great reputation in the mule community, and so I don't want to badmouth anybody that I, I don't truly know what their reputation is, but I had a horrible experience with him. He sold me a mule that wasn't what it was supposed to be, and um, everything that he said it was, it wasn't. And I ended up taking it back after about five weeks, which I was really surprised he took it back. But I took it back after about five weeks, and I got Chief. And he told me, he said, I don't know anything about the mule. He's been out in the pasture for six months. I haven't touched him. 
nothing. All this guy does is buy mules high and sell them low, which is what a lot of people do. But there's good people out there. Once these mules get to know you, they're in your pocket. You saw when I was walking up to the gate, they were already at the gate. That just doesn't happen. When you go, if you are interested in buying a mule and they tell you stands for farrier, bathes, clips, loads, you know, all of that type of stuff, that may be very well and true at their farm. But when you get them to your farm, they're in a new environment with new smells, with new tasting grass, with new grains, new people, and they have a learning curve to go through. They're going through separation anxiety from being separated from whoever they were bonded with at their old farm. It's true, it happens. They may load on their trailer, but not your trailer. And I'll give you an example. I had a 99 two horse straight load feather light. It had the center bar that went down the middle. There was no tack room in the back. It was just two even doors um, with equal spacing. But that center divider did not move. It didn't shift to the left, it didn't shift to the right. And it was very, very skinny. It was like two foot six inches wide um, on, the, on the inside, actual usable space. And like nine foot six inches from head to tail. And you had to put a tail bar on them so that they didn't kick the back door open, which was almost impossible to do. Well, my mules would walk towards that trailer and as soon as they got to it, and they had to walk through that skinny gap that skinny gap to get into that trailer. And they did not like walking through that skinny gap and they would balk every single time. So I started hanging out with some mule guys and I noticed that they were all using stock trailers with center dividers, like 16 foot stock trailers with a center divider. So it had two eight foot boxes. The whole back of it opens up, you know, it's just seven foot wide, seven foot six tall. And I never had my mules where I could try it out on their trailer to see if they would load up on that trailer. So I went out and bought one just hoping that they would load on it. And when I got it and I opened it up and I led Joy over there, Joy just walked right up into it like nothing. And then Chief, without even being told, just followed her right in. And I knew immediately that a horse trailer doesn't always work for mules. And a lot of people want to use all of their horse related stuff on their mules. And they are not compatible in most cases. The saddles fit different. Um, you need a britchin that goes across the back of their butt. Their backs are so flat that the saddles don't sit down in that swell on their back. So the saddles will slide forward going down a hill. They'll slide backwards going up a hill. So not only do you have to have a breast collar to go on them, but you got to have a britchin to go across their butt um, to hold the saddle from sliding forward. It's just everything's different about the mules. Their feet are smaller, their hooves are smaller. Um, they, they grow a little bit different. Not much, but they grow a little bit different. 